Good morning and welcome to St. Agnes. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings can be found in the back of the hymnal, number 1,124. Our entrance hymn is number 688, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, number 688. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In, in my, my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, in what, what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the heart. We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, 
Son of the Father, you'll take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You'll take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the cold. Of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you too shall live. He has set forth before you fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever he chooses shall be given him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all-seeing. The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands every man's deed. No one does he command to act unjustly. To none does he give license to sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who wait is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his decrees. With all their hearts they seek him. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. You have laid down your precepts to be carefully kept. May my ways be firm in keeping your statutes. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Deal bountifully with your servant 
that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see the wonders of your law. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes, and I will keep them to the end. Grant me insight that I may keep your law and observe it wholeheartedly. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we speak a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages of our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. 
But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says you fool will be liable to fiery Tehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge and the judge will hand you over to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. We continue our journey through the Sermon on the Mount. So just a quick review. Recall two weeks ago, we began with the Beatitudes. Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit and so on. These were the attitudes of being, having the right being relationship with Almighty God. And by living the Beatitudes, we will find peace, joy, happiness, contentment in our souls. With that then, last week we heard if you really live those beatitudes, you're called to be the light of the world, the salt of the earth, to make a real difference. Now we go on to six precepts of the law, four of which our Lord addresses in our passage today. So here we have the law. The Jewish people highly respected the Torah, as we heard in our first passage from Sirach, that if you choose to keep the commandments, they will save you. If you trust in God, you shall live. And to none, he gives license to sin. In the Psalm, we prayed, blessed are they who follow the way of the Lord. So the commandments, all the Torah laws were meant to keep people on the right path. Jesus says in the gospel, I have come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. Consider. Moses went up on Mount Sinai. He was with God, he received the commandments, and he brought them down to earth, to the people. Jesus goes up the mountain to begin the Sermon on the Mount, but he calls people up to the mountain to be with him. So he's taking us to a higher standard. The idea is we don't just look at a dead letter of a law, but rather we fulfill the law in its spirit. So our Lord presents to us a new law, and that's the law of the gospel. Again, he doesn't abolish the moral teachings of the Old Testament, but he is going to fulfill them. So through the law of the gospel, we have a law of love. We approach these 
commandments as a child of God, not as a serf. A serf would look at this as, well, let's just do the minimum standard. Let's be happy with mediocrity. Let's just follow the dead letter. Whereas the child who loves wants to grow in love and really come to perfection in our holiness, in our love relationship with God. Then Jesus, with the law of the gospel, he brings us the grace to fulfill it. So we aren't left to just follow a rule book on our own, but rather through the grace of the sacraments, we receive that supernatural sharing in God's life and love that enlightens us, inspires us, strengthens us to do what is good, to want to be holy. This then too, in the law of the gospel, is one that brings real freedom. We aren't trying to calculate, you know, how far can I go before I break the commandment, or how do I exempt myself from this and so on? No, we want to live freely because of love. We want to live the fullness, the freedom, relying on God's grace. So with that, consider what our Lord says. He says, you've heard the commandment, thou shalt not kill. Well, of course, strictly speaking, we don't murder people. We don't take the life of an innocent person. Our Lord, though, fulfills this. He takes it higher. And he says, you can kill somebody in your heart. So through bad words, he mentions a couple of insults. Raka would be like our contemporary N-word, an awful kind of insult. Or we can slander someone, gossip about someone, lie about someone, put something on social media, and kill that person. We could hold hatred in our heart and kill a person. So our Lord takes us to the higher standard. Then he goes on. He says, you've heard the commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. Of course, physical adultery is a sin. Take it further. We can commit adultery in the heart. Pornography, lewd conduct, lewd conversation. That too is adulterous action against a spouse. Jesus says, marriage. You've heard in Deuteronomy, Moses allowing a contract of marriage and the breaking of the contract if the wife is displeasing. Now note that it's the husband who can divorce the wife who displeases him. Our Lord says no, that marriage is between two equals, a man and a woman. It's sacramental. When they come together in marriage, they form an indissolvable bond. He takes it to the higher standard. And really, the standard that was given in Genesis. Then lastly, we hear of oaths. So, we take oaths. But at the time of our Lord, the Pharisees had all these little different regulations. So if you swore by heaven, or you swore by Jerusalem, or you swore by the altar, you were bound in a different way. And you could be dispensed from your oath depending upon what you swore on. And our Lord says, no. If you say yes, mean yes. If you say no, mean no. Be honest. So four precepts of the law that take us through the law of the gospel to a higher depth of spirituality. So the challenge is then is to live it. So you and I should go back this week and start with the Beatitudes, keep on reflecting on them, seeing how well we live them, ask ourselves, how well am I the light of the world, the salt of the earth? Think about how do we live these commandments or any commandments in the depth of their being. After all, St. Francis de Sales simply said, our calling is to live Jesus. Now, if you think I'm done, I'm not. So you might be thinking I'm suffering from PPS, which is Pinizzato Presto Syndrome, but I'm not. Today, bishops, the bishop has asked the pastors to talk about the Bishop's Lenten Appeal, which if you've lived in this diocese for a year, you're familiar with the appeal. Hopefully you've even received the literature in the mail. And so, first of all, his letter. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the theme for this year's Bishop's Lenten Appeal is shared with the second preparatory year of our diocesan golden jubilee. My soul rejoices in the Lord and draws our attention to our Blessed Mother. Each of us can seek 
to imitate the perfect example of Mary by proclaiming the greatness of the Lord each day as we live our faith and share our blessings. When we support the BLA, we help to bring the glorious gift of Christ to thousands of people in need of spiritual, charitable, and educational assistance across our diocese. I respectfully ask that if your circumstances allow, you prayerfully consider a sacrificial pledge to this important goal. If your gift will be used to enrich and improve the lives of others and will be an instrument of the joy and peace that only Christ can give. I am grateful to all of you who have given in the past to this appeal. In a few moments, your pastor will guide you through the pledging process. Please be assured of my prayers for you. Through the intercession of Mary, our mother, may our Lord Jesus bless you abundantly, now and always. Sincerely in Christ, Michael Burbage, Bishop of Arlington. With that said, again, hopefully you've all received the information. The Bishop's Lenten Appeal does help fund many good programs in our diocese. It helps Catholic charities. It helps with evangelization, subsidies for Catholic education, and so on. The one real reason, the primary reason, I give each year is because the Lenten Appeal pays for the education of our seminarians. Those of you who have kids in higher private education know room board tuition costs about forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year. Now, if you multiply that by six to eight years of education, that's an enormous amount of debt for a young guy to take on just to be a priest. So our diocese pays for that education. We're also blessed. We have 46 seminarians who are studying to be priests. Eight are going to be ordained as priests this year. That's amazing. Two are from our own parish. So Tony Bennett, Mike Nugent, who are deacons, they'll be ordained priests. They're giving their lives to you all, to serve you, to serve your children, your grandchildren. So it's very important that we support them. We are blessed. You go to some parts of our country and you might find one priest for a parish. You find a lot of older priests, not as many young priests. So our diocese is blessed because I think the great witness of faith among us all. So I would just ask you to take time to contribute to this fund. If you haven't received the literature or misplaced it, you find these envelopes at the end of the pews. There's a pencil, you can fill it in, maybe during the offertory time, drop it in the basket. If you're really technologically adept to this, there's even a QR code in here, so you can go right to the website but the key is that please do take some time to make a pledge so that we can do so much good in our diocese. And again, especially to help prepare these young men to be priests for us. May God bless you. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. 
who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, you said that where two or more are gathered in your name, that you would be in their midst and hear their prayers. With this confidence, we offer these petitions. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of the war in Ukraine, the withdrawal of Russia and the restoration of justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith. And for non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of the earthquake in Turkey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us. And for our parish seminarians, Deacon Tony Bennett, Deacon Mike Nugent, James Joseph, Gabriel Godet, Michael Gibbons, and John Anthony Mono, and for Sister Monica Batiste Whalen and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, novices for the Dominican Sisters of Nashville, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, especially Arsenia Pinon, and for our deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Alfonso Dominic Puma, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions held in the quiet of our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear all our prayers, even those prayers held within our hearts, and to grant them in accord with thy divine will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And calling upon the prayers of our Blessed Mother, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 1268, Be Thou My Vision. It can be found in the worship supplement in the back of the hymnal, number 1268. Thank mm -hmm. you. Sleep. 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good good of all his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Agnes and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
adoro te devo te latens deitas que subis vigoris vere latitas tibi se Totum subjicit, qui a te contemplans, totum deficit. Hidden here before me, Lord, I worship you. Hidden in those symbols, yet completely true. Lord, my soul surrenders, longing to Contemplation wholly faints away. Seeing, touching, tasting, these are all deceived. Only though the hearing can it be believed. Nothing is more certain, Christ has told me so. What the truth has uttered, I believe and know. God was hidden when you came to die. Human nature also here escapes the eye. Both are my profession, both are my belief. Bring me to your kingdom like the dying thief. I am not like Thomas who could see and touch. Though your wounds are hidden, I believe as much. Let me say so boldly, meaning what I say, loving you and trusting now and every day.
announcements. So our poor box collection this weekend is for the Red Cloud Indian School staffed by the Jesuits on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. That could be a premonition of who's going to win the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Work camp teens are in need of two adult men to volunteer. So please contact Katie Hofer or Father Heisig for further information or check the bulletin. Without these volunteers, some of our kids won't be able to attend. You have to have so many adult volunteers for so many kids, males, females, all that thing. So and also do not forget to purchase or return your raffle tickets, which do help fund work camp. All are welcome to a retreat contemplating the cross with the St. Mary Magdalene on Saturday, February 25th in the parish hall. Please see the bulletin for details. Let us pray. <clears throat> Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the root of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 627, O God Beyond All Praising, number 627. Oh, uh -huh. 